Hey, Kitty Cats. It's Kitty July. Um, I am back in my hotel room. It's like 11 p.m. And I just wanted to make a really quick video because there was just one or two more things I wanted to say. And yesterday when I made my video, I mentioned that I was really nervous about reporting. So today is my first day of reporting. I'm just getting home. I left the hotel at 7 a.m. this morning. Really insanely long day. Everyone's been super nice. Um, for the story, it's a positive profile, so they don't have any reason not to be nice. But it's just really exhausting. Um, and I went to dinner with, you know, the PR rep and the CEO and the COO of the company, and that was a ton more fun. So that was really nice. We went to um, this fantastic Chinese restaurant with this Michelin star chef here in Pittsburgh, and I got fried wok chicken, so it wasn't breaded or anything, but it was wok fried with um, green beans and peppers, delicious. But the really surprising thing is I had sugar and I did not dump. And I know that you can dump on some foods and not other foods, and you can dump sometimes and not other times, but um, this is the fourth time that I've had dessert since I've had surgery. Two of those times have been not sugar-free times. So earlier in the week, I actually made gluten-free cupcakes for my girlfriend, and I had about a third of one um, with, you know, lemon buttercream frosting, I think, and had just enough to, like, really enjoy it, ate really slow, was super happy that I stopped when I did, didn't dump. But I was like, well, you know, it's not like it's straight-up sugar or something. But then at dinner tonight, you know, after the chicken, we're talking, it's like a three-hour dinner, so it had been a pretty long time since I finished my food, and, oh, God, it was like a four-and-a-half-hour dinner. Oh, my God, no wonder I'm so tired. Um, so, you know, it's four of us, everyone orders dessert, and it's like, oh, let's all get something different, let's all share. So, like, okay, I'm just going to order something, and I, you know, it's a fancy restaurant, so every, everything's pretty little, um, but I got praline, banana, Parfait it was really delicious. And I just had two little bites. And then I had one little bite, um, you know, like five minutes later of the brown butter pear crumble. And then I had five minutes later one bite of this crunchy chocolate dense tower thing. I don't know. So, I mean, I only had four bites of sugar. And then like another half hour later, maybe, so also the timing is probably part of it, they brought the petite fours, you know, whatever the little free sample-y desserts are that they give you at the end of a fancy meal. And one was um, a mango, like a mango jelly. So good. Really dense, I could tell, though. Really sugary. But, you know, less than an inch square. And then a teeny tiny little meringue with a guava center. So all of it was just incredible. And it was all, like, literally a bite to try, a bite to try, a bite to try, a bite to try. And then I, like, kind of mentally freaked out, not because I was disappointed with myself or anything, but because I was like, oh, my God, what if I get sick? But I didn't. So I had heard from someone else, and I won't mention just in case he doesn't want me to, that something like 60% of people with gastric bypass don't get dumping syndrome. And, you know, I know for me I had a huge sweet tooth before the surgery and was in a really nasty habit of eating tons of ice cream every night um, before the surgery, so I'm really glad that I haven't had the needing desserts, but I also feel like the last almost four months have sort of been a break to get me out of the habit of eating dessert after every meal and needing to end my night with something sweet. And, you know, tonight out for kind of especially occasion sort of, where, you know, the pastry chef is ranked number two in the nation or something insane like that, I was glad that I could have a bite of the three different dishes that I wanted to try and you know, the petite fours and not leave anything, you know, not leave the restaurant feeling like, oh, I wish I could have had that. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and my eating otherwise today has been really great. I had, you know, one strip of chicken from the restaurant and some vegetables. And for lunch, I had a few little pieces of steak from Qdobo, a you know, Mexican place, and some beans and veggies. And for breakfast, I had a skinny latte. So really, really healthy food otherwise, besides, um, you know, the sugar. I'm trying to think if that's all I had. Yeah, that's all I had today. And But that got me thinking, and I know I made a comment earlier to Jody saying that I wanted to make a video response to her because, you know, she also kind of had a rough week. Not that I had a rough week. I'm trying not to get bummed about losing one pound. But, 
you know, she probably much more so than me has been working her butt off at the gym and, you know, sort of deservedly should have had a bigger loss this week. And something that she said, I think even in the comments, is what struck me that, you know, she doesn't want to be a robot. And I'm going to switch to me talking because <laughs> um, this is how I feel. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, if I could just, if I could just figure out mathematically how I can have the most protein for the least calories, you know, and incorporate the vegetables and just eat that every day. Do you know what I mean? So if I could find the breakfast that works for me, you know, pretty much, I mean, I have a latte or, um, you know, London Fog, which is steamed milk and tea every day. So pretty much I have what I think is an awesome breakfast every day. But anyway, if I could just find, you know, the perfect formula for, you know, I'll have salad for lunch with this, and for dinner I'll have this, and for breakfast I'll have this, I would be able to maximize my weight loss, and I'd get to my goal sooner. And and then I stop myself, because it's like, not just some days I'm hungry than, hungrier than others, and some days I'm battling hormones, and other days I'm not. And, you know, but food is social, and I like food, and I like eating with my friends, and I like going out with my girlfriend, and you know, I love that this surgery lets me go to a restaurant, have three tiny bites of dessert, and then not think about it, not spend the rest of the meal like I normally would, thinking about how I could keep eating and cleaning all three plates and not look like a fat so, which is basically what I think about all the time pre-op. Um, and I like that the surgery lets me go to the Shake Shack with my girlfriend and have a sixth of a hamburger if I want it, and it's delicious and incredible, and you know, that I get to be part of that discussion when people talk about the Sheik Shack, that I get to enjoy food. You know what I mean? And I just feel like if mathematically I could figure out 500 calories is 60 grams of protein and I'll have two shakes a day and four bites of food at each meal and, you know, whatever that formula would be to make me a little robot and to be eating my little protein pellets of dense nutrition – it just strips away so much of the fun of food. And, I mean, pre-op, I feel like such a big part of my life was food that maybe it almost wasn't fun then either. But now is when I feel like it's perfect. Now is when I feel like I can have a bite of something and be satisfied and, for the most part, not be seeking out the most amazing or delicious extravagant experience, you know, for the most part, enjoy, really enjoy having a salad. Do you know what I mean? Like, my new favorite thing in the world, Le Pan Quotidien, this, you know, bakery cafe, they have them all over the world. I don't know. I hadn't seen them before I moved to New York. But just the most amazing Cobb salad, which is like grilled chicken, some avocado, blue cheese, bacon. I mean, all of that is just so protein dense, except for the avocado. And it's delicious. You know, for that to be, like, the thing that I'm really excited about and indulging in is so exciting for me because before I would go there and, you know, order a soup and a sandwich and a dessert and, you know, a sugary iced tea and, you know, just trying to pack in as much as I can. I don't know. I'm super rambling. I just feel like, Jody, it's okay that we're human. And not even it's okay that we're human when we make mistakes because I don't think – you know, I think obviously we can make mistakes, but I don't think wanting to eat normally and wanting to not, you know, treat this like a one-year break from friends and family and culture. And, yeah, food is a big part of that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to take a one-year break from that. I want to enjoy food, and I want to enjoy being social. And I'm excited that the literal act of eating is no longer so center stage. But I don't want to completely take myself out of the party either, if that makes sense. So those are my two weird food things. I mean, no dumping threw me for a loop, threw me for a surprise. I'm not upset about it. I thought I would be upset about it. I feel like I've delayed seeing if I would dump for a really long time because I felt like if I knew that I could eat sugar, I would get right back into it. But, I mean, now it's been four months. I am pretty excited to be able to have dessert once in a while. You know, yay for the surgery that it could be. Um, okay, hope you guys are doing well. Lots of videos for me because I'm by myself in a hotel room. Ciao.